So I was playing Civilization, it was this ancient world map, and I was playing as Israel, and all around me was Macedonia, aka Alexander the Great Empire, so in Greece, Egypt, and Persia. So what I did, and this was really cool, is I had all of these fortifications and soldiers on the Suez Canal, and on the kind of, you know, Istanbul area. So, and then that way, all of the troops that he was sending in to get me, he couldn't do it, because I, I was guarding it, and then I could just send all of my troops into Persia, so basically I was just able to to just send all of my offensive might against him in Persia and all of his offensive might in Egypt and Greece was just coming up against this massive defensive wall I had at Istanbul and uh, the Suez Canal. Ah, well, that's great, Michael. It was yeah, awesome. Did you uh, shoot a few protesters as well? You know? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, no comment. There weren't any protesters. No, yeah, no comment. No comment. All right. Anyway. Um, the real question is, did the Macedonians send their kids to throw rocks at my soldiers so that their kids would get shot? Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's oh, a bit political. It's, it's those, <laughs> no. Everyone knows it's those kids' fault, Michael. You know, yeah, like, true. what are the Israelis going to do? Not shoot the kids? I mean, come on. Exactly. You got it. Back up, chump. You know Biggie Small rips it quick. It kicks it quick. You know how black niggas get. With the hood fatigues, with the boots with trees. All the people looking for trees, making crazy trees. Hitting buck shots at niggas that open spots on the avenue. Take my loot and I'm bagging. <laughs> Pippin' holes that drive bobos and rodeos. Flash the roll, make a wreck in their pantyhose. Damn, a nigga style is an orthodox grip the clock. When I walk down the crowd of blocks. Just in case a nigga wanna act out, I just black out. Blow the motherfucking back out. That's a real nigga for you. Hello and welcome to Select and Reflect, the movie review podcast where we look at films that have come out relatively recently at the cinema and see if they still hold up upon a second look. This week, well actually sorry, I'm Michael and I'm joined as always by my co-host Luke, and this week we're going to be looking at Rogue One, a Star Wars story. And Luke, why don't you tell us a thing or two about Rogue One, Certainly, Michael. a Star Wars story. You know actually I saw this movie uh, twice in cinemas, so not just once, twice. Wow. Yeah. So I saw it, and then like some uh, my friends wanted to see it, so I saw it again like two days later. It's great. And wow, that's yeah, so incredible. I'm pretty well caught up in this movie. So Rogue One, a Star Wars story, or, or simply Rogue One, is a 2016 American epic space opera film directed by uh, Gareth Edwards. And obviously, it's uh, the first standalone movie in the Star Wars universe. All the other um, Star Wars movies have been episodes. This is the first one, which is just completely separate from all that. Um, obviously, we're yeah. doing it because nothing to do with <laughs> yeah, nothing, nothing, to, do with yeah, nothing to do with that. No, uh, we obviously we're doing this because of Solo, um, which is coming out um, today. Actually, well, actually the day before you're listening to this. Uh, and so uh, on to who stars in the movie. Uh, we've got a load of people: Lisa T. Jones, Diego Luna, Ben Mendelsohn, Donnie Yen, Mads Mikkelsen, Alan Tudyk, Jan Wen, and Forrest Whitaker. Uh, came out on December the 16th, 2016, in the United States. And do you want to have a guess at the budget, Michael? Uh, ooh. That's an interesting one, because obviously, again, I don't think Disney would have been afraid to put a lot of money into this. Um, having said that, something about their tendency of hiring seemingly relatively unknown directors makes me think that they're trying to do a bit of a, a small budget limitations foster creativity thing. Like, that's just my... Because obviously the thing with the prequels is that it was like there were no limitations and it ended up terrible. So I almost wonder if Disney imposes limitations. Michael, um, I'm going to need a new However, one. I'm going to guess 200 million. Uh, 220. Okay. So, yeah, a, bit, a bit higher than you thought. And uh, how much did it make at the box office? Oh, see, I, I've got to say over a billion. Over a billion, it made one point. See, I don't know how how well it would. I don't know if it would have done fantastically well, um, because I feel like there's a lot of reasons people wouldn't care. So I'm gonna go for one point four eight billion. Wow, you uh, you're really overestimating this movie's appeal, Michael. I have to say, oh, yeah, really? it's only oh. it's only one billion, just just one billion, just the one. Uh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. very, I think it was very successful. Obviously, if you if your movie grosses over a billion, but. Yeah, that is successful. Yeah. I was um, 
I, I guess I was kind of just thinking in my head like it would trickle off a bit less exponentially after the Force Awakens, but yeah, I mean, my logic was thinking lower than the Force Awakens, but well, yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I still thought Star Wars. Got a lot of hype at the time, I guess. obviously, because of coming off Force Awakens and the fact that it was like this new yeah. kind of Star Wars movie, like. You know, like obviously all the other Star Wars movies had been episodes. This was the first standalone one. So, uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine, actually, well, having said that, Han Solo has got that name recognition. So maybe that will also gross uh, over a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well. So I think after doing that, we should talk about the plot for a bit. Just to give us some up. Actually, no, we should ask We should ask whether we like this movie. That's how it goes, right? Yeah, it's what it yeah. goes. And also, yeah. So uh, yeah, we haven't done this for a while. Uh, so Michael, did you <laughs> like this movie? Break. You know what, Luke? I was surprised at how much I did like this film. Um, I I'm gonna admit to something. See, you just said that you saw this film twice at the cinema. Um, I didn't see this film at the cinema because my attitude was kind of you know who cares. Um, and Funnily enough, when I watched The Force Awakens and I thought The Force Awakens was, well, everyone else said it was average and when I thought, or, or, or OK, I guess. Some people were even saying it was good. And I thought it was like, uh, like I would have probably said I disliked it the first time I saw it. And of course, we discussed it a while back and I said I hated it, which is, yeah, something I still stand by. Um, so I hadn't seen Rogue One, though. And I was just kind of assuming in my head, well, lots of people responded negatively to Rogue One. So... If I disliked The Force Awakens, which everyone said was okay, then I'm probably going to hate Rogue One, which everybody says is not that great. Um, Just a contrary. Was, I was, well, yeah, I was surprised. I didn't, I didn't love it. I want to clarify that. I, it's not like, but because I do have a lot of criticisms of it, but I was surprised at how much I did like well, it. Well, that's good, Michael. Uh, what about you? I, I did not like this movie. Uh, well, that's kind of good. So I want you to explain. I didn't hate it. Because yeah. I didn't, I didn't like it either. Uh, so let's go over the plot first. It's all about Rogue One uh, stealing the plans to the Death Star. Obviously, in A New Hope, um, they need to blow up the Death Star, the Rebels, and they get the plans and they blow it up. But the real question behind all that is, and the, and the question that fans after A New Hope were asking is, how did they get those plans? And 40 yeah. years later, we finally had the answer to that with Rogue One. Uh, it's all about Jyn Ursa and uh, her friend, Diego Luna, two rebels who managed to get the plans and uh, then beam them up to the rebels uh, before they all meet their inevitable demise. Because, obviously, if these characters were so important, why weren't they in the New Hope Empire and Return of the Jedi? So, yeah, they, they had to die, I guess. Uh, yes. But, yeah, so that is basically the, uh, the one-line summary of the plot. It's about getting the plans to, uh, for the Death Star. It is a very simple plot, yeah. uh, which I guess maybe we'll talk about. So, Luke, did you have any nitpicks? I did, Michael. I did. How uh, many? Five. I had uh, surprisingly seven. Wow. Oh, my um, God. Oh, this is going to be great. Yeah. I always enjoy when you get a lot of nitpicks. I always enjoy it. Yeah. I was, to be honest, it was. this was another example of a film where I was, like, thinking about it a lot as I was watching it, um, which meant I noticed probably more nitpicks than I usually would. Uh, but you, seeing as you've got the fewest, you have to go first to see if we we agree on any. Yeah. Uh, or, so know. first one is, and I remember uh, noting this down in my mind in the cinema uh, all those years ago, or one and a half years ago, um, the first scene in the movie in which the, the bad mm. director guy lands his ship. He lands it yeah. so far away. Yeah, that's one of mine. <laughs> from Galen Ursa's house. I was I was watching it, I was like, Jesus, like that. When I watched the... Uh, the cinema sins review of Rogue One. That's that's going to be the first one right there, no doubt about yes. it. Yes, uh, I've heard other people mention it, but even though I'd heard other people mention it, I had to write it down when I saw yeah. it. Uh, I can just imagine Galen Erso just seeing like all these people approach him, ready to capture him, and he's just constantly looking at his watch, like, oh, these guys will. This is you know, this is taking a while. That would have been funny. That would have been a yeah. really good sketch. It would have been quite niche, yeah. niche, but you know, that would be good for SNL. Yeah. Be good for the 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 next space balls. Yes, that would have been great. So uh, I'll wait till the next the space balls remake. The next one is um, there's when uh, what what's he called the Diego Luna's character Cassian. That's it. When Cassian and yeah, Gin, Cassian and yeah, when uh, they get to um, Cassian and Ginosa get to 
Jenna. They encounter those two people from the cantina in Tatooine in A New Hope. And I thought, yeah. like, that right there, I'm, I'm fine with some callbacks, but not only was that callback completely out of place, it, it, it yeah. didn't make sense at all. Why are they on Jeddah? It's, it's not Tatooine. Like, they, um, obviously, because Jeddah gets blown up literally an hour later, they would have to get, up, get off Jeddah as well. So, That's yeah, true. I just... Also, really, it was the will of the Force that that stupid cam- <laughs> The Force is very invested in, in pointless cameos. It's just so bizarre. It's like, I was so unexpected. Like, wait, why are you just shoving these two characters in here? They've got nothing to do with Jeddah. Like, if they were on Tatooine, I could understand it, but they weren't even on Tatooine. Uh, yeah. Very bizarre, like I said. So the next one is a convenient nitpick. Uh, Jyn Erso manages to find Sol Guerrera, you know, the exact hour that the, they... Uh, the Death Star decides to blow up Jedi. Okay, now I'm going to have to... Who is Sol Guerrero? What do you mean, who's Sol Guerrero? He's far as worst character. I, I just wrote him down as black guy. <laughs> yeah, was he the only black guy in this movie? Um, that seems unlikely for modern Star Wars. They try to get a few in there, but I can't think of any others. No, I mean, Finn's the only black guy in the new ones, isn't he? Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, so, even the uh, the person who does Maz Kanata's voice is You would black. just assume, based on how much people care about it, that everyone was black. Like, the way people yep. complain about, like, oh, there's a black guy in Star Wars, Disney SJWs. Yeah. So, Forrest Whitaker meets Ginesa. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, uh, literally, like, minutes later, Jedi gets blown up. I don't know, why, why do they target Jedi? Uh, I think because it sounds um, like Jedi. That's yeah. Reason. But... Yeah, there's got to be something else. There's got to be a reason why uh, they were they the city. Oh, kind of aware that the people were on there? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Was that? Oh, wait, hold on. Where were the Kyber crystals? Were the Kyber crystals on Jeddah? Wait, what are the Kyber okay. crystals? I, I don't know if they're called Kyber crystals. The so. Yeah, they are. They are. They're removing Kyber crystals from the holy city to power the Death Star, while Guerrera and his partisans are engaged in an armed insurgency against them. So once they get the Kyber crystals, they just decide to blow up the planet. I, I assume planet. you're reading the plot there, because I, I yeah, like I the am, idea yeah. that you just go from being confused about something to having an encyclopedic knowledge about it. It's like, were there kyber crystals on there? Oh yeah, there were. They're the blah blah blah. Founded in yeah. 1853 BBY by Block Tick Toon. <clears throat> yeah, it's just very convenient, is all I'm going to say. Uh, next up, so in the Star Wars universe, there is a consistent criticism that stormtroopers are shit. Yeah. That they're like they, they can't aim, they can't do anything. They're just pointless. They're worthless. But in this movie, Rogue One takes it to a whole new level with the fact that some blind old Chinese man with a stick can like defeat six of them. Yeah. At the same well, time, and the thing is, he doesn't even have a gun or a lightsaber. Just a stick. He's just hitting them in the back of the leg, and they fall over. Like, how bad is that armor? How badly are these guys trained? Yes, uh, I I agree. I suppose. I suppose the, the thing is they're probably not trained to fight against guys with sticks, you know? So, uh, no, but how, how much can, like, it hurt? That's true. Like, if you get hit really badly with a stick and you've got armor on. Like, either you're very weak or the armor is... Well, I don't think worthless. the, the like armor has ever actually done anything. Like, you've never seen a stormtrooper get shot and then be like, oh, good thing I'm wearing armor. So I don't know, I don't know yeah. in what exact context the armor... The thing about how much money they spend manufacturing this armor... You know, it's got... Think about how much money. I mean, they got a lot of money. They can build a fucking Death Star. You know, they waste. Like, I really want to look at their financial statements. Yeah, that'd be really interesting. Yeah, actually. that's that's one of the things George Lucas missed out on to further build the <laughs> Star Wars universe. That's true. That would be good. Um, yeah, it is. It is. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Not. Good. Yeah, I am right. Yeah. So, uh, the stormtroopers uh, not being able to just well, just be. Utterly useless, even more useless than they have been before, is another one. And the last one, James Earl Jones' voice. Uh, it's pretty bad. I think he, I think he's lost it, Michael. I think uh, he's lost. See, the, the weird thing is, you'd think that you could just... Um, like, seeing as his voice is already kind of robotic, it wouldn't be that hard to take literally anyone's voice and make it sound quite Darth Vader-y. But for some reason, they couldn't even make... Yeah. James L. Jones' voice sound Darth vader No, yeah. So maybe, I was thinking that, like, maybe they did the best they could. I mean, they obviously, like, somebody must have heard it and think, you know what, this doesn't sound... <coughs> Sorry, uh, speaking of voices, <laughs> no. This doesn't sound too right. But, yeah, yeah. 
he's, he's clearly lost it and uh, hope you know you don't have to hear that again because that was I was listening to it I was like oh this oh you know uh, this this isn't good uh, but yeah so that's my oh, wait, I have one question uh, was it um so you know at the end of Star Wars Revenge of the Sith there's a bit where Darth Vader goes no because uh, yes <laughs> because he's found out it killed Padme I assume that's James L Jones doing that bit too. So maybe yes. that's maybe it's not just the bad. Maybe he's bad at everything now. I don't think I've. I I, I really like how Darth Vader, like this, <laughs> most, such a feared supervillain. You know, the possibly the most feared villain in movie history. His first words were, "Where is Padme?" I just it's just brilliant. Well done, George. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. So these are mine. These are they. Number one, and this is one that that. You mentioned, but I wrote down as a nitpick. Grand Moff Tarkin. <laughs> he he looks like a cartoon character. It's weird because it, it's one of those ones where you there's nothing specific you can point to to be like he he doesn't look like a human. Like there was nothing specifically that was wrong, but just collectively, it just didn't work. It just. I'm gonna have to disagree with you. Mike. Did you think it was fantastic? I didn't think it was fantastic, but I thought it was fine. It was passable. Huh? Like, here's the thing: we all we all know that Grand Moff Tarkin is like one of the main people in the Empire. Uh, if you watch the first three movies, obviously. So I, I didn't really see the problem with it as long as it's done to a good level. And I and I thought the CGI was fine. Like, I think if you well, I know this actually. If you don't watch the movie you know, four, five, and six, you will not know that that guy's CGI. You just think he's like a regular. Oh, that's an. Uh, you, what, what's your what's your evidence there, Luke? Hmm. Well, when I went to the cinema the first time, with or the second time with uh, some of my friends, I, you know, said, you know, that guy's CGI, and they they didn't know. Really? See, I'm surprised because to me, yeah. he looked like thinking of him in my head. Do you know what it might be? Okay. Uh, you, there's a, a cartoon show called Star Wars Rebels, which before anyone thinks I'm a man child, I need to clarify, I haven't watched, but well, we know somebody. Who yeah, exactly. Does. And I I walked in on that person. We are not him. Yes. I walked in on that person watching it, and I saw Grand Moff Tarkin in that. And the weird thing is, he's stood in the exact same place, kind of almost moving in the exact same way as this CGI character. And I feel like it could be the association just made me feel like it felt like um, it felt almost Beowulfy to me. It felt like to me. I mean, yeah, okay, I, I understand that that your evidence that uh, that somebody would notice is is very compelling, and I'd say it's pretty good. But I don't know, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm I was fine with it, but the, the CGI I wasn't fine with was Princess Leia's. To be honest, like I that, no, that was bad. I'm sorry, that was much much oh, worse. This is interesting. See, I didn't. Her cheeks were like so fucking. Drippy. I think the thing with Princess like, Leia is it was shorter, which made it almost like no, like I was kind of okay. No, with... no, no, no. It's not about you know the the quantity. It's all about the quality. Yeah, but I couldn't. I didn't have many time to pay show. attention. Oh, so I think by that yeah, point like, I was just so bored. Oh god, it was bad. It was fucking awful. Like, just show the back of her head. You don't need to see her her face. See, I obviously with that they were they were physically de-aging Carrie Fisher. Were they? Because I would just assume that the guy who played Grand Moff Tarkin must be dead. Yeah. So he is. they when they made Grand Moff Tarkin they they built him up completely from. The, yeah, the ground. ground. Whereas with Princess Leia, I assume they just de-aged. Wait, Carrie when did Carrie Fisher die? Uh, she died after. She, well, she died oh, when, yeah. she, when they were she halfway saw the through. Movie and then she died. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> She's... Yeah, it's, it's, that, it's, it's not wrong. It's not wrong. It's pretty. That's true. true. You saw the movie and then yeah, she those died. two you things happened sequentially. All right. Well, um, well, I guess apparently, according to to my informant. If you haven't seen Grand Moff Tarkin before, you won't notice it. But to me, I thought like I feel like we're not there yet. I to be honest, I'll put it this way: I was I was pleasant. I thought it was good that we're that close to getting it right. But to me, it felt like we've just got a tiny bit further to go. But, I mean, if you think if you think it was great, Luke, then then I guess we've just I think it was great. If you think it was the yeah, best you know, CGI ever, then yeah, well, it's better than Daddy's Home CGI. I do think it's interesting though because we've had. CGI characters for ages, and and we've been okay with them. I feel like it's just the mo- the minute you try and make a human being CGI, like it's more, more difficult. Uh, it's yeah. very easy to but get like, CGI is, in. Yeah. Anyway, all right. That is true. So um, 
What's the name of Forrest Whitaker's character? Sol Guerrero. Sol Guerrero uh, dies for no reason. He di- he has like this heroic sacrifice. It's, it's well, it's it's painted like a heroic sacrifice, but he's basically just lazy. He's like, yeah, I'm tired of running. And then <laughs> and, and like literally, he could have he could have just like it's not like they were sprinting away. He could have just walked with them to where they're going and stayed on yeah. there. It was he didn't achieve anything by dying uh maybe he can't live without something that he has there at his base and he's like well if i go then i'm just gonna die anyway well, you know what it reminds me of okay have you seen the the what if star wars was good series no i'm I haven't surprised been, actually because it's quite a big deal so basically there's this guy who made his own versions of uh the prequels um where he kind of like tried to do generally keep the same format as the original tri- uh, prequels but make a few changes uh just as he went through uh and it, it worked well in the first one by the second one it was kind of like the changes were butterflying what matters is that in that instead of count dooku being like a bad guy he's kind of more like a, a conflicted character and at the end they go to meet him in the in geonosis and they find out that Palpatine is going to bomb the place and Count Dooku's like, you know, I need to die here because it will send a message. And for some reason I was thinking about that because it's very similar. It's people in a sandy planet who are old saying that they need to die there. But in both cases I'm kind of like, no you don't, you idiot. What are you talking about? Yeah. So basically what I'm saying is whoever did this, they clearly got this from that. I'm surprised you haven't seen it, Luke. You should watch it. Because you should tell me what you think when we do our standalone special on Star Wars. Yeah. You know what, Michael, I will link it. To you. I will make sure. Anyway, it. Oh, thank you. Next one. Um, this one's actually a really big one. I don't really get why he couldn't have described. Uh, this is the um, the oh, what's his name? Jin Arso's dad. I don't get why he couldn't have just described where the i can hear a is there a car that was a motor okay <laughs> anyway i don't get why you couldn't have just described where the thing was because when you watch a new hope basically they're like hey shoot this torpedo down this exhaust pipe like all they get from the plans to luke is hey luke shoot down this exhaust pipe so pretty much they work out their like everything just by knowing that they need to shoot down that exhaust pipe so literally why couldn't Jin Erso's dad have just said in the hologram, there's an exhaust pipe and you need to shoot down it? Like, I don't get... I mean, obviously, like, I understand that the plans would be better, but it seems to me like um, it would have been at least worth saying, for example, he could have said, I've built a fault where if you shoot into an exhaust pipe, it blows up. Go and get the plans if you want more detail. But yeah, just so you know, like the way he says it, it's like it's very, it's unnecessarily nebulous. He's like, I've built a fault in it. It will be able to destroy it. We can fight this, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, I don't get why he didn't just say this is the fault. And also, second thing onto that, I'm going to guess that seeing as, you know, the Death Star plans were in the hands of the enemy, were in the hands of the Empire, the, the fact that the exhaust pipe can be exploded isn't obvious because if it's obvious then the empire would notice it too which means that it's actually kind of convenient that the rebels were able to see it and the empire weren't just from getting the plans yeah but, i mean you make a good point there, michael but yeah i don't yeah. get why i didn't just say i built an exhaust port and it's explained in the plans and at least that way you know why didn't he send the plans as well there's another nitpick why didn't he send the plans yeah to the Death Star along with a pilot. Why did you this have to send example. the pilot? This is a good example of a film that tries to explain a question that didn't really need to be answered and in doing so creates like a billion more unanswered questions. Yeah. yeah. Every, should, yeah. should have been made. Um, now, okay, I've got this one. Darth Vader says to uh, Krennic, don't choke on your aspirations. Now, here's my question, Luke. Obviously, the way he says it, it's like it's a double entendre. You know, or or play on words. But I don't think the phrase choke on your aspirations is actually a thing people say. So it doesn't really... Uh, Unless you're going to... I googled the 
yeah, I Googled it to see like, is this, because I was thinking to myself, hold on a minute, I've never heard anybody say, like, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work as a pun if nobody's ever said yeah. it. Yeah, uh, that is a good point. I didn't think about that, but yeah, like, who, who would, I mean, he's just trying to be funny, okay? Just like, you know, he's had a very hard life, Darth Vader. You know, he just wants a bit of fun, you know, a bit of banter with the lads. Um, general credit. So, you know, don't be too hard on it. All right, now this one's a big one. This is actually one of my ones that's phrased as a question. In this, pretty, well, okay, my question is, what happened to people doubting the Force? Because in uh, A New Hope, the whole thing is that there are loads of people who say, oh, it's an ancient religion, it's blah, 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 blah. It's, you know, um, doesn't really matter. In this, every single person seems to not only accept that the Force exists, but intensely revere it. They're always like, Force yeah. movie. And you don't, you don't have anyone who's like... Because it's implied by Han Solo that for the average person, the Force is kind of like a silly thing. Like, unless you're part of this weird Jedi cult, you don't really care about the Force. But in this, literally every single person is like, Force be with you. Force is yeah, force, force, force. Um, and it's not well, maybe it was just Han Solo. Well, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's like my only explanation is that the rebels care about the force, um, and therefore, you know, so the rebels care about the force because they have Jedi origins. Um, but I really didn't. I yeah, the implication you get from A New Hope is very much that there's only really a handful of people on the in the entire galaxy who really care about the force. I mean, apart from anything else, like. Uh, the way Leia is written in The New Hope is like she's she's being set up to learn about the Force. Like the whole like you kind of get the impression like that she is learning about it as things go on. But of course in this it's like she's already really um already got everything sorted. She already knows about the Force. Like she was probably really uninterested when she met Luke. She was like, oh the Force. Yeah, I've been I've been blessing people with the Force for ages from a big loudspeaker. So the force yeah. and Luke's like, well, I'm the protagonist, and I just heard about it yesterday. Anyway, uh, are you I've got one more. Uh, okay, what is the point in the horizontal elevator to the tower? I know it's not technically an elevator if it's horizontal, but they're they're on um, Scarif. Is it called Scarif? Scarif. Okay, they're in Scarif, and they get on this like they go into this door, and then they stand this thing, and the thing kind of like. Zo- zooms horizontally to the tower and i think to myself yes why not just have the door at the actual tower and then you don't need this pointless elevator yeah you know what michael that is a good point you should contact the artist architect of whoever designed that very weird yeah. i feel like it's just like spacey yeah. but you know space yeah you... doff butter no parsnips anyway we spent a long time on the Netflix. Yeah, the one thing all films have, Luke, is characters. Well, yeah. Yeah, okay, so I've got one, like, introductory thing to say about the characters, a general point about the characters. Um, what they should have done here is... So, number one, they should have had characters who are introduced from other th- other films. Now, obviously, that's kind of, like, difficult to do because it's like, hold on a minute, then we'd have to get characters from the prequels and we're pretending the prequels don't exist. So it's very clear what they should have done is made this film later. Because I I, I kind of hope, I mean, I don't really care because I'm not that fond of what Disney's doing with Star Wars, so it doesn't really make much of a difference to me. They'll basically, they'll make a competent prequel. So I'm kind of hoping they will eventually, inevitably, remake the prequels. Um, And... Even if they don't remake the prequels, though, they're going to make anthology series, like, for example, Solo. Uh, yeah. So, for example, if they would have made Solo first, they could have introduced just a character in Solo, had a character in Solo, and then that character very easily could have been reintroduced in Rogue One. If they would have made hand- like, so that that's how easy it could have been. Just make Solo first, introduce because that way, because the problem with this is it's literally every character is being introduced in this film, and they're all just being introduced and given, you know, the bare minimum characterization so that you kind of care when they die. So it makes this film feel very pointless from a character perspective. There's no characters who have any history. I don't like, maybe they'll retroactively try and do something where they're like, they they try and introduce, like, there'll be a scene in in Solo where it's like, oh, look, it's Chirrut Imwe, 
but I don't think they will. Who? Chirrut Imwe. Do you not know who Chirrut Imwe is? No. Chirrut Imwe is the blind guy. Oh, the blind right. Chinese guy called Chirrut Imwe. Yeah. Yeah. Memorable Star Wars character, Chirrut Imwe. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that's my general general thing I was thinking throughout this. I was thinking like I would be so much more invested if you had like, you know, Obi Wan dying. I mean obviously it would be like someone with as much characterization yeah. as Obi Wan. So well here's the thing, Michael. I think we should before we talk about the problem with the characters, we should actually get into the actual characters that's good. first and describe okay. them. So when we complain about you know, the fact that this movie didn't focus on characters, you know, we can we can have some context. Yes. Which did you so, start with, Luke? Well, Jinnus. Okay, yeah. Um, Jinnus, so the, the main character in this movie. I'll I'll just uh, talk about her for a bit. So, do. Uh, Jinnus is you keep it, uncharismatic. By the way, you keep what? calling her Jin Ursa instead of Urso. Does it really matter? Yeah, no. But you know what it is? It makes me think of After Earth, where the the main villain or the main evil creatures in the M Night Shyamalan film After Earth are called the Ursa. Wow, I trust you to bring up something completely insignificant like <laughs> Go. in that situation. So Jin Ursa, she is uncharismatic, and throughout the whole movie she looks like just so bored, like she's just waiting for it to yeah. be done. She's just waiting to die. Yeah. Uh, her hope thing is obviously she doesn't care about the rebellion, and so that makes her hope speech, which in itself was cheesy, just completely ridiculous. Uh, and just, I mean, I, I could not, I, I could not fathom why she was written like this she was, she was just so character. yeah she was just so dull uh she also something that maybe would have added to her character you know having a background um uh, she has no background apart from you know that she's the daughter of uh galen ursa uh and spent some time with forrest whisker when she was growing up but what i mean by that is no background is when uh she gets so she gets um saved or rescued like immediately and I, you know, she's going to do this uh, job in some coal mines or whatever on this weird planet. Then immediately she's rescued. And the thing is, I was ex- I was surprised by that because I was expecting, you know, for her to, you know, have some dialogue with some characters, you know, uh, do a bit of her job, you know, so you could really see where she was at in her life. But she immediately gets rescued. And it's the same problem, uh, Michael, as uh, Anastasia in Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, you know, there's... she. There's no background to the character. Immediately she gets thrust into the plot, into the action. And if they just took some time beforehand to, you know, get to know her a bit better, because you really, like, that's the thing, when obviously being the main character when she dies, the audience is meant to have some connection with her, but there is no connection to her. Um, and obviously it makes the it makes her death even less impactful, but I was just really surprised at the fact that she had no background. She was, like, so, like I say, uncharismatic. And just really an awful, awful character. Yes, I wrote down, down Jin Erso is not an inspiring character, and I wrote that down yeah. during her hope speech because I was just thinking to myself, what? Yeah, like what is this? She's not. She she is the worst. Well, people in outside in my house are making noise now. She is the worst character, in yeah in in the film definitely. Um, the other thing is like, I don't think she really. You don't really see her have a character arc because you're basically you're told that she's this kind of jaded character, but it's like, like, you don't really see her being that jaded. Like, she's kind of just, or or it almost seems like it's not, like, jaded, it's more, like, disinterested. Like, yeah. Forrest Whitaker's well, character like is, said, she just seems yeah, Forrest Whitaker's yeah. character is jaded. Like, he seems jaded. She just seems like she kind of didn't really care, and then, and then she was like, hmm, yeah, like she's... maybe I could do an inspiring speech, and then, like, yeah, she's she's not like, like a hand solo. Edgy. Yeah, like they try and write her like she's a rogue of, of yeah. some sort, but I guess it's the joke, Rogue One. Um, but yeah, she's she's tr- supposed to be written like a rogue who's you know uh, bad and stuff like that. But she's she's not. She's just she just seems like generic good guy who's not very interesting. Um, yeah, like an, well, I was going to use the comparison like an edgy teenager. That yeah. Kind of thing. Yes. You know, I think that's that's a and that's a a real shame. Uh, to be honest, because uh, I think that the key to well, we can talk about that later, but the key to this movie was getting her character. Yeah. They thoroughly failed in that. Also, I wish she killed Krennic. Oh yeah. That's I just think myself, why did she kill Krennic? She should so kill Krennic. Just I want to see. You never see the good guys just murder people in cold blood. 
That's probably the best thing about Revenge of the Sith is when Anakin just kills Darth, uh, not Darth Maul, Count Dooku. Huh? Isn't that just cool? And the kids. Yeah, and, the, and the younglings too. <laughs> and the younglings. Uh, uh, yes. N- next up, we need to talk about Cassian. Yeah. Jin's partner who tries to murder her dad and then they hug it out. At oh the yeah. End. So, you know, no hard I, I wrote that under plot because I wanted to say this. That, that, her, no sorry, Cassian being sent to kill Jin's father seemed like it had like no real significance to the plot. It almost felt like, um, it, it honestly reminded me of The Room because like in The Room, the the whole thing is like there's like the drug dealer and it just feels like yeah. a completely shoehorned in bit of, <laughs> bit of melodrama because it's like oh yeah. D- denny he's got a drug dealer he's got to do that and it's like and then they have a big argument about it you know why did you take are you doing drugs blah 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 but then like ultimately it doesn't affect the rest of the story or the characters it picks the tension exactly and that's literally what it was it was just like uh you know <laughs> why have you killed her father cassian it's kind of don't worry about it he's going to jail <laughs> yeah, but it, it didn't so, affect anything. Yeah, uh, Cassian uh, also suffers from the same problem that Junessa does. Uh, he's also uncharismatic. Also, uh, just well, he seems quite bored throughout the movie as well. Uh, no background either. Uh, he alludes to it a bit. Remember when? Um, what, what does he say when he after he kills or after he tries to kill Junessa? He says, dad, oh, I he had says a something, time. and I can't. I know what you're talking about. I can't even remember what it is. Yeah. He just says, like, did, did he say his parents died or something? Yeah, I think or, that's it. That... Probably everyone's, yeah. The thing is, everyone's parents are dead. Yeah, it seems like a really interesting story, but that's it. Like, he just seems like a generic, like, rebel. Like, there's nothing, there's nothing like, two-dimensional. Yeah, him. well, uh, see, I, I heard... The thing is, at the... I heard at the beginning, before I'd seen the film, I heard that Cassian would shoot a guy in, in kind of, like, a yeah. casual way. And he does shoot a guy in a casual way. But it doesn't. It almost seems like like so casual that it doesn't even seem to be like influenced by his character. It just seems like he's like, oh, just gonna kill this guy, and then yeah. he just leaves. And then like, there's no other. There's not like ramifications. Yeah, like he doesn't seem to be bothered by it. That's the thing. Like he's not likable, like Genosa, but he's actually a worse character than Genosa because he actually straight up murders a guy and doesn't seem to care about. Well, see, it. I would I would like it if if they had. Someone who was, uh, you know, just just a cold-blooded killer. Um, I mean, because for example, I guess the obvious counter there is is Han Solo. Han Solo shot first. He he killed. It's okay yeah, though, think, yeah, to be a cold-blooded killer if you have the person. Yes, exactly. That's what that. I'm saying. So the problem is, it seems yeah. like it's not. He's not the right kind of. He he's not written like a, a rogue or an anti-hero. Yeah. He's just written like. A confused person who just kills people for no yeah. reason. If he's a by the books rebel guy, then he's meant to be likable. But you can't make him likable if he just like, like I said, just kills a guy, just murders him. How can that person yeah. be likable then? Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, so who's next? Luke? Donnie Yen. Or okay. That guy. Chiri- anyway. Yeah. I I had two things to say about him. Number one. He says a stupid line when he's fighting the stormtroopers. He goes, "Is your foot all right?" Um, which is not. I was like so weirded out when he said it because it's not even like a clever line. He like he hits the stormtrooper in the foot and then just goes, "Is your foot all right?" And it's like it doesn't seem natural. No. It doesn't seem like he's. It doesn't. He doesn't. He's not written like a wise it, kind of whipping, you know, guy. It seems. Uh, uh, it seems forced, Michael. If you'll pardon the pun. Yes, well, the thing is, I guess, like, I almost feel like part of it is the limitations of Donnie Yen as a an actor, because, I mean, I know he's starred in a lot of Chinese films. Like, I've only, apart from this, I've seen him in Chinese films. Uh, so he, I think he yeah, lives in China. Kyle. Yes. Well, actually, you know what? Here's a, I, I have to kind of cop the fact that I was the one who originally put that film on, and then Kyle kind of went insane about it. Because, yeah, it's called Why Bitman. Why do you do these things? To be fair, it's not a bad film. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, so, no, yeah. but the fact that he went on about it and watched it all, yes. I was just like, Hitman! Hitman! He was so... <laughs> he's, he's certainly obsessive Fucking hell. when it comes to women. <laughs> oh, you know what? I found out a word that perfectly describes Carl the other day. It's called one-itis, and it's when you just... uh, It's it's the idea that there's a, a girl and she's the one, and you can't get over her. That's him. Yeah. And I was thinking... I was like, yeah. Anyway... Donnie Yen, yeah. So it kind of feels like uh, it felt a bit like anime, anime banter, like oh, 
uh, Shagetsu is your Futoke? Ah, oh, oh, you have dishonored me. Sorry, are I know you, that. Are I you know. just saying that because he's Chinese? <laughs> well, no, what I'm saying is because I feel like it's the... Uh, e- basically, what I'm saying is I don't think that East Asian se- uh, na- non-native English speakers, especially for some reason East Asian non-native speakers, seem to not be able to do banter in, in English, which I guess, I mean, obviously, like, I couldn't do banter in Chinese. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it kind of just felt like, is your foot okay, stupid man? Yeah. Why was it he didn't... in this movie, Michael? Why? Oh, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Who knows? While I'm saying who knows, by the way, uh, the relevant letters are in currency. For example, the S in who knows is a dollar sign. Yes. Yeah, that's a, it's just a visual gag there for, you, for all of you. Well, I liked I liked my Wu knows joke yeah, because mine was better. Is a is a Chinese is a, a, yeah. a Chinese language. The thing is, I like I think the role of just this old knowledgeable horse guy is is good um, for a, a Chinese uh, actor because obviously um, you know that you uh, you have these kung fu and karate guys yeah. you know these senseis. Because uh, ethnic minorities are magic, is what you're saying. <laughs> no, yeah, that, basically the cult, the East Asian culture of all of those kind of martial arts things, uh, yeah, is, it can be uh, it is similar to the to the Force and the you know, the Jedi and all that. So it it does work, it you know, but the fact that uh, an old Chinese guy would be like this. Uh, but the problem is that I think he was in the movie for money, to make money. Yes, and uh, you know. Your, your intention does matter, and their intention wasn't to create a character, which made sense. It was to yeah. make money. But you are right. It's it's a really good idea. The idea of um of because I guess what he represents is kind of like the idea of the force as a religion, um, and it's kind of a good way of getting around the limitations that we're told that most of the Jedi were killed uh, at the end of you know Revenge of the Sith mm-hmm. and kind of at the beginning of A New Hope. And yet they're going to have to keep making Star Wars films during that time, and they've got to have people talking about the Force. So yeah. you know, introduce these. So the the one thing I would say though is I did like his "I'm blind" line. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I like that. It made, that actually did. I think that actually made me smile. Yeah, uh, it worked. It's got a bit of character so well in it. Um, I will say this though about the whole lightsaber. Oh, the whole but he can't you he can't be a Jedi. I think I would have really liked it if he did have a lightsaber and brought it out um, towards the end of the movie. I think that would I would have liked if he if he found a lightsaber. Oh, maybe that's good. Yeah. If he so so he didn't carry one around with him, but he found one because then it would kind of be like he's not a Jedi, but you know yeah. he he has. But yeah. I think it would be good if if he, if he pulled, uh, if he pulled it out as a surprise. So it, pulled out as a laser sword. Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's yeah. something people are. Reading. It's going to be great. Yeah, but it's uh the thing is I think it would be good if like in the final battle he pulls it out and you know it's a surprise. Maybe he like earlier in the movie he finds something in a box and he looks at it and he goes like oh like that like oh okay, it's a lightsaber. But you don't find that out till later. Uh, Probably. But if he if he fought with a lightsaber, then that would mean he'd actually have to try and stay alive rather than just standing still until he gets exploded. Yeah, and that just doesn't sound as exciting. No, it doesn't, does it? Uh, the thing is, though, I I wish he had a lightsaber because I think it it would have worked. But also the fact that see, I uh, the first time I watched this movie, I watched it uh, with my dad and my brother, and my dad said as we were walking out the movie, like, oh, I he well basically he expected lightsabers to be in this movie because it's a Star Wars movie, and you get it in the end with Darth Vader, which we'll talk to uh, talk about later. But before that, there was very little lightsabers, and that's something that he was expecting. And I think maybe a lot of other casual Star Wars viewers... See, I, I didn't expect the lightsabers because I knew it was about stealing Death Star plans. You know, at this time period, there aren't any Jedi, so it makes sense that there wouldn't be any lightsabers. But it would have been good, uh, I guess, for casual viewers if there had been a Jedi. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I mean, I feel like the natural person to talk about now is the guy with the machine gun, but he doesn't have a character. Oh, yeah. Donnie Yen's gay lover. Yeah. <laughs> it must be uh, gay. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you, you tell me that... When uh, the guy with the machine gun looks at Donnie Yen's dead body, you know there's 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 more than just a bromance there. There's something deeper. Yeah, that's true. Something much deeper. Mm. Who do you think would be on top? Oh, Donnie Yen. <laughs> he, he's clearly the alpha in that scenario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I just thought it would be worth bringing him up just to say that there's nothing to talk about. Like, I mean, really, like, yeah. what does he even have a sentence? Does he even say anything? 
he makes fun of Donnie Yen. He goes, ha ha, yeah, you're the, a tiny any Asian penis. The, the force is awful. Ha ha. It's uh-huh. a stupid religion or something like that. But yeah, he is pretty yeah. He is pretty pointless. Um, yes. And we uh, another point, well, not a pointless character, but because you'd need him for the plot, but the, uh, the pilot. Uh, oh, you mean, uh, you mean, um, oh, what's his name? I know his name. Riz Ahmed. You know what, Michael? I thought it was Riz Ahmed, but because it was a, a very generic, like, Arabic name, that I thought if I said it and it was wrong, you, you might think I was racist. Well, that's my theory. It's my theory about how black celebrities probably don't get bothered in public. Because, like, I saw someone, I was out, and I saw someone who looked just like Samuel L. Jackson. And I was like, I'm so sure it's Samuel L. Jackson. Like, it looks just like them. But I was like, I can't walk up to them and say, are you Samuel L. Jackson? Because if I do, and it's not Samuel L. Jackson, then, I, then I'll look racist. And I was thinking, like, that's probably something that uh, black and Asian celebrities have going for them. Yeah. Like, if I saw someone who looked just like Donnie Yen, I wouldn't walk up to him and be like, hey, it's Donnie Yen, because, you know... <laughs> Like that, you would... that reminds me of a, a scene in Family Guy. Oh my God, it's Jackie Chan. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's Jackie Chan. Oh, it's Jackie Chan. <laughs> yeah, a uh, bit of a racist joke that for you. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, Riz Ahmed's character. I, I can't remember his name. Uh, he's he's basically the pilot of Escapes. Again, he's got a tiny bit of a personality. You know, I think he does a good job, Riz Ahmed. He pl- he he did a good acting job. And actually, after we talk about all the characters, we should talk about the actors because I've got some stuff to say about that. But yeah, I think he, I think the character, it was better than the bare minimum. Uh, but yeah, again, not very interesting at all. Yeah, well, I tell you what, is kind of a problem. The rebels are kind of terrorists. So basically, let's let's be honest. What you've got here is a guy, a guy who starred in Four Lions, is now starring in a, uh, in a film about some people trying to get some plans for something that's going to be blown up. So basically, what I'm saying is. It's racist. Yeah, yeah. He was a he was a weird character because he kind of he, he he was kind of like a one of those characters who seems almost thrown into it because at the beginning, like I couldn't really work out what he was even doing at the beginning because he was like running around going, like, I have a message for some people. It's a message, and then he kept like getting arrested by like different people, and then and it was like I've got a message, and then he'd get like thrown to a different person, be like I've got a message. Well, and he was very clear in the fact that he he had, had a message. message. Yeah. Yes, I definitely worked out he had a message, but I couldn't work out like. But yeah, um, yeah, he clearly he... idolized Galen Ursa, which obviously was yeah. the motivation. So I think his character works, not the greatest, but uh, I'll give it a pass. Yeah, and he was good in Nightcrawler. He was, he was. Next up is the droid, I think K two S O. I wrote down the droid is the only one with a personality. Yes, uh, because he is he's he's funny. He is funny. And he, he's also the only one who has a heroic sacrifice. Everyone else just dies in like, like they don't really need to die. Mm. Um, I mean, well, obviously, like going on the mission itself is a sacrifice. Yeah, Donnie Yen kind of has, has that. Like a, yeah, but he is the only one who, because he dies basically kind of blocking the the tunnel or something. I don't know. Yeah. Like he's he dies doing something. I can't remember what he's doing, but um. Oh yeah, he was. But, yeah. killing all the stormtroopers as he was making sure that. Um, those, they couldn't get through. Yeah, um, fucking Jinnus, if that's a Jinnus, and Cassian uh, managed to escape and get the plans. So uh, well done to him. So well done to him. Yeah, he was he was the best character. Yeah, he was. Um, moving on. Oh, you know what I'd like to see actually, like a, a heist film that's literally a bunch of rogue robots. So you have like a rogue astromech who's like black and then an arch racist, but. <laughs> You have a rogue, a rogue protocol and etiquette service droid, and and like I don't know what they'd be doing, Luke, but it would be awesome. Yeah, let's make it happen. Maybe should pitch that to Disney, and just end with I don't know really what's going to happen, but it's going to be. You awesome. could call it Rogues One Zero Zero One One Zero. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually you know what, so uh, K Two S O was captured by the rebels and reprogrammed and turned to help them. So obviously. We need an origin story as to how he was captured. Yeah, can we talk about the fact that, okay, so a bunch of rebels or a resistance capturing a robot and turning and reprogramming him to help the protagonist is exactly the story, the plot of Terminator 2. Arnold Schwarzenegger is captured by the resistance and sent back in time to protect John Connor from handsome policeman robot. Hmm. I believe that was his name, yeah. 
It was a great film, Terminator 2. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, before we leave the characters, because I think we've said on the main ones, and if we've missed out a character, well, they're obviously so irrelevant. As to... Oh, yeah, there's Galen Nurser, who's the dad, but he's not really in it much. Like, he's... Uh, he's still chronic. Oh, yeah, fuck. I don't really, because he's just a generic bad guy. We just leave yeah. it like that. He does, he's, he's a classic, um... He's so pointless. Yeah. He's, he's it's kind of weird, because I, I heard someone point out that he... He, it's interesting because he seems to kind of like um, Galen Erso at the beginning. Yeah. But then, but then that kind of like goes away, and then at the end, he doesn't really seem to care yeah. that much. So, uh, seems a bit pointless. The thing is with Krennic is that he's very aspirational, but he sometimes chokes on those <laughs> aspirations, which is an issue yeah. that he yeah, he has to deal with. Um, so I, I just wanted to talk about the acting, Michael, in this, yes. uh, and the specific, specifically the acting of one of the City Jones. Who plays Ginersa? Um, the best. Oh. Sorry. The best acting ever. Yeah. So when I watch this movie, obviously in the cinema, you don't really notice the acting too much. But while I was watching it back uh, recently, obviously to do this podcast, you just notice how bad she is. Like she is bad in this movie. She did not do a good job at it all. It was the worst. Yeah, you're right. It it was really, really bad. And I don't know if she's a bad actor. But well, this this was not good. Uh, I definitely haven't seen her in anything else. Yeah, this this there was this moment, okay, when uh, Cassian and uh, so so it's when they're trying to get the plans and uh, Krennic is shooting at them, uh, and Cassian gets shot and falls. You remember this? Yes, classic scene. And then like, so he's if Cassian falls onto this like ledge at the bottom and he's clearly injured, but the fact that he got shot means he might be dead. You know. He might be dead, and well, yeah, I assumed he was dead. And Jin Ursa then, um, she looks down, and she just goes like Cassian, like that, but not in a in a um, not in a, in a way in which she she displays that much emotion. Like it's like oh yeah. Cassian, like I just I just have to like Felicity Jones, like I just have to say his name. Like I'm gonna say it so unconvincingly, like because obviously they're men, are, you know, care about each other. To some extent, by this time in the movie, uh, but yeah, she's just like Cassian, and then she just looks at him with like that same like bored expression on her face, doesn't do anything, and just continues to, you know, go up to the top of the tower. Uh, I was just awful, like completely, like I said, unconvincing. Yeah. Jin Erso is such a bad character that not only was I not invested in her character, but she made me uninvested in other characters. Yeah, that's a good point. How bad she was. Awful. Uh, Okay, so I think we've discussed the characters or the acting, unless you want yeah. to say anything else, no? No, now we need to discuss what the characters... Oh, yeah, but let's go back to what I was saying. They should have... Yeah, yeah. stupid of them to make it... To make this film first, wasn't it, Luke? They should have made a different film first, and then they could have set up some characters for us to care about. Yeah. Literally just, just made all these characters just so that they could die. Yes. Uh, so here's the thing. Why... I. I, I complain a lot about the characters, especially Junus and Cassian, uh, in this movie. And obviously, like, there's bad characters in other movies. But I, you know, some people who are listening to this or the one person may be asking why we are complaining so much about these characters. And yeah. it's the fact that for this movie to work, this movie needs to be a character driven movie. Uh, quite simply, the characters need to be good, they need to be likable, they need to be interesting. Um, because Here's the thing. We know how it's going to end. Like, the plot isn't that interesting. As we've said, it's simple. They've got to get the Death Star plans. So that in itself is pretty, you know, simple and not very engaging. But we know that they're going to succeed because everybody knows in A New Hope they can blow up the Death Star because they've got the plans. I, I assume everybody who wanted to see this movie had probably seen A New Hope and knew what was, you know, knew that they were going to succeed in the end. Apart from the, uh, the kids that watched. Yeah, maybe they didn't know. But, you know, all, like, people who appreciate movies anyway, because if you're a kid, you don't know, you know, what's a good movie and what isn't. Um, anybody else, you know, they know what's going to happen. So that, you know, since the ending is already known, you've got to make sure that the characters are good, that it's a character-driven film. Otherwise, yeah. it's just boring. And that's the major reason why I just did not like this. Because the characters, like we said, are so shit uh, that it's just... It's it's not interesting at all. 
it could have taken advantage of the fact that you knew what was going to happen by making it so it's like you know we know that what they did was really important and this is the story of their tragic sacrifice but yeah it just it didn't work they should have um i was going to say one other thing they should have had like something to actually indicate that at least some of the characters didn't want to die because pretty much every single character seemed to be kind of like they didn't have any any aspirations, any uh, thing attaching them to the rest of the world. This wasn't like, you know, people with a, a wife and kids and things like that who were like, you know, well, we've got to do this for the Empire, even though, you know, I'm risking my life. You mean the and rebellion. Then... Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, uh, yeah, there was none of that, basically, was there, Luke? Yeah, um, so that, that's, that's my major issue with it. Also, I think the deaths, obviously, they sacrificed themselves. It would have been... Exact. I mean, more meaningful if the characters actually meant something. Like, if you actually could remember who uh, Diego Luna's character's name was. Like, if, you know, still like a year and a half later, I know that that character is Cassian. Obviously, I forgot what his character's name, uh, what his character's honest, name was. I just thought the character's name was Diego Luna. Oh, right, okay. That's how, that's how, that's how bad it was. I was thinking like, yeah. oh, Diego Luna, yeah, that character. Like, if I'm remembering the name, like a year and a half later of the character, like that movie was good because it made me care about the, his death. And obviously, like, you know, if they're all dying at the end, like, and that's meant to be emotional, then that gives you even more reason to try and make sure that the characters are good, you know, and not just like one dimensional characters who are, who are shit. Also, another aside, the, uh, the deaths. Uh, well, let's, let's talk about the end of the movie now, Michael, since we're on plot. Let's do, because we, uh, yeah, we'll talk about the end. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I want to talk specifically about the end of Rogue One. So obviously all the characters die. So you get a nice space fight, which you know is is quite cool. Uh, very cool, in fact. You get you get that reference. Yeah. yeah, we get that reference. Yeah, you get that reference. Um, but I I I don't know if you thought this would have been good, but because the death the death lacked emotion anyway because the characters were shit. But even if the characters were like good, like you said before, like the the deaths aren't that emotional because they, they're they not really sacrificing themselves. Only the robot, K2SO, is actually sacrificing himself. And that was a really good point for you, because uh, I, I I think if they were sacrificing themselves, it, they, they didn't just have to die. Like, you could have written it, that, like, say they jump on a grenade to save, like, their comrades. Exactly. Yeah. And also, yeah. before they die, if they said, like, for the rebellion, all of them, I, th- I don't know. I just thought like maybe that would sound like very cheesy, but I thought that would be cool. Like if they just have a uh, rebellion, so it means more. You know how much this means to the whole Star Wars universe. It would give that that extra bit of emphasis. I think that what they should have had is is variety. Apart from anything else, so we're kind of talking about the end. One of the um things that I I think they should have done is had at least like one of the characters be killed kind of at the midway point. And obviously, Forrest Whitaker's character was killed, but he didn't really count. Oh yeah, he no was one just cared about him. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they could have had like a character who it's like kind of they need to get to say the next point, and he's kind of like the first sacrifice, and that establishes the, uh, you know, the fact that this is going to be a, a film of sacrifice. And yeah, they also they should have had like um, so you know, you know the farmhouse scene in Avengers Age of Ultron. Avengers Age of Ultron. Oh boy, do I. No, yeah. Well, see the thing about that is whatever you you want to say about it, it was it would have made a lot of sense if they were setting up Hawkeye to die in it because um, because it shows you Hawkeye's life, yeah. his family, his kids. So basically what I'm saying is they should have had a scene where they they go to see one of the characters. Like there'd be a character there who was who had a family and he was like, like, I'm doing this for them. You know, I'm doing this to protect my kids to make sure. And then and then he dies. And he like when he dies, it's kind of like reluctant. But he realizes he's got to do it. He has like this moment like, oh, I've got to. Yeah. Even though, you know, and, and it's like, you know, he's doing it for his kids. And uh, yeah. like, yeah, so they could have had like a mix. So they could have had some characters who were just kind of, you know, um, for example, Ka- Calrissian Endor um, could have been written like he's a rogue and he just kind of doesn't really care. And he's like a criminal and he shoots people and he's kind of just like not much better than a, a hired gun. But then at the end, he does something heroic, for example. Yeah. Uh, but pretty much every single character is just like they're kind of detached from the rest of the society they're either, you know, weird monkish hermits or criminals. Mm-hmm. And hello, Sorry, someone got a text. That, that was from um, Twitter. Actually. They're, uh, yeah, they're either weird monkish hermits or they're criminals. And literally every single one of them, they just die because they're like, oh, it's a bomb or 
Yeah. A lot of them get killed by bombs, actually. Yes. So, yeah, they yeah, do. they didn't. Yeah, the, the, the deaths aren't sacrificed. Oh, and they didn't yeah. seem to have that much of a connection with each other either. So it wasn't yeah. like, you know, well, it I... wasn't a moment of Jin being like, Car- you know, Carisian. It's too long. It's too long of a name to to die, really, because you can't shout it yeah, out. You need to know Luke Maybe... or Leia. That well, you know what? She could have called him, if she would have called him Cal for sure. She would have been like, you know, they, they developed a friend. She called him Cal. And then when he dies, she's like, Cal! And then he falls down. It's like, it like zooms in on his face and he's like dead and then... And then he falls off, and then she's like, no! And he's falling down, and then she gets a gun, and she, she shoots the stormtroopers because she's so angry. And then she gets to the top, and she sees Krennic, and she's like, oh, Krennic, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot you. But then, you know, Krennic, he, um, he gets to jump on her, and at the last minute, Calrissian, he appears again, and he's like, uh, and he's like, yeah, prepare to die. And then he, <laughs> he shoots Krennic, and then... And then I don't know, like maybe maybe they could have had something where it's kind of like uh, rather than just waiting to die, because pretty much like at the end they don't really have anything to do, so they're just waiting to die. They made it so there was like some significance to the fact that they like they had to uh, they had to stay behind to close the the portal, so that the like they could have had, for example, a massive fighter was about to leave. Um, where were they, Scarif? Yeah. So they could have had, so a massive fighter was about to leave Scarif, and they're like, oh no, we have to close the shield. And then they're like, but if we close the shield, then we'll be trapped here. And they were like, well, oh. we're just going to have to... And then, or maybe they, they chose to blow up the planet. There's so many things they could have done, Luke. I, I like this it's... fan fiction, Michael. I like this Rogue One fan fiction. Yeah, and instead I, it's just like, oh... And I'm just wondering how you like this movie, if you can clearly tell that there's so many flaws in it and so many problems and so many you know, aspects it... which could have been so much better. I was, I was thinking to myself, like, afterwards, I was kind of looking forward to talking about this film because I was kind of, like, thinking to myself, like, um, I'm looking forward to, to realising... That it's that it's actually really bad. Um, yeah. The... Well, now now you're getting into it. Uh, I just w- yeah. will say this though for the characters. Uh, I know we just kind of stopped talking about them, but uh, I think it would have been helpful if there was only four of them, because then obviously you could get like better personal connections between the characters. Um, yeah. And uh, and obviously, with uh, less characters, there's more time for each individual character to you know develop more, uh, to, so the audience can get to know more about them. So, for example, you only have uh, Genosa, Cassian, and also Donnie Yen and the robot. Yeah, that would work. Yeah, there you go. Done. That's all you need. Yeah, great. Um, what other, uh, I wanted to say something about the plot. So, okay, there's one good thing I liked about this film. One good thing. I found the plot to be more coherent than The Force Awakens because it was quite simple the thing about the force awakens is as when we were talking about the force awakens i kind of said like it's like they go here completely arbitrarily and it's all completely coincidental and then there's a big action scene and then they go somewhere else with this it did kind of feel like the the one thing i liked about it is i was like okay it makes sense to me that they're going here and then they're going to go here um and i basically i think i liked the middle of this film uh the the beginning was a bit like eh, and then but it, t- towards the the middle I was kind of like I was enjoying the the coherency of the middle like I say I was enjoying the fact that I was like okay I understand where they're going and why they're going there and yeah obviously there were a few nitpicks but I was like okay I can get this but then yeah the problem was when the film expects you to care about all these deaths and you're like eh. um I guess. The thing is, yeah, the, the film could have done, like, not too much of the film needed to be changed if they would have just, you know, given the character's character. That's all that needed to change. All that needed it's a classic change. example, I think, of, of a film where it's more like there are a few fatal mistakes. Uh, but also, I think, like we said, what needed to change is the way they die at the end. Yeah, that's true, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I just want to else I have to say. Okay. I liked the fact that at the end... I like the element that they had to go rogue in order to capture the plans, pun, because the rebellion weren't willing to do it, and it kind of shows like, yeah, I like, yeah, I thought that was kind of like clever because it was like, um, it's it's a good example of um, sort of doing something for the benefit of people who don't even want you to do the thing that you're doing. If that makes sense. So it's like, uh, yeah, they're being heroes, Michael. Yeah, they're being heroes and they're, they're being... It's kind of like the opposite to... You know you know the, the classic Batman line, I'm not the hero 
Gotham needs and the hero Gotham deserves. Yes. This is like the opposite to that. It's like, well, you know, they're going to vote against us going to get the plans. They're going to vote against us doing the right thing. But we're going to do the right thing anyway, even if it means we have to go rogue in order to do it. I like that. I thought that was like, you know, yeah, that would work really well if yes, in, in, a, in a better context. Uh, um, yeah, I, I think I, I, I agree with that as well. I just wanted to say. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I, I noticed this right away. The, the fact that there was no title crawl um kind of like uh Did it fuck you up a bit no it, it got it got the message across that this story is pointless because usually it's like um it's like they have to have the title crawl because it's like they need to set up the plot they need to be you know they need to introduce this new situation yeah um in this case they didn't need to do any of that because it's like you already know you know there's that's yeah. They're, they were already struggling for a plot to uh, basically let's go get this thing. Uh, so yeah. Oh, by the way, Michael, you talked about how the uh, just before how obviously uh, Cassian and Juno so they they were being heroes. You know they uh, the rebellion didn't want them to go and get their Death Star plans, but they went anyway. Uh, and I like uh, like you said, I, I like that idea. Uh, basically rebelling against the rebels, but the, um, what I don't like is how it how it came across. So basically the Rebellion just didn't believe in the Death Star, uh, even though they had good intel on it. Uh, and obviously, like they had um, this uh, this pilot, Diego Luna, who must be a very trusted member, uh, saying, yes, this is a problem. Uh, I, I just think that right there, it's, again, uh, this should have been a nitpick, really. It doesn't really make sense why the Rebellion wouldn't believe that the Empire have a Death Star. Well, you know what's kind of a massive problem with it, in a way? Ultimately, what it represents is the inherent problem with democracy. Because the the thing is, like, they put it to a vote, and they lose the vote. And the funny thing is that the Empire would just be like, oh, OK, let's do this thing. And everyone else would be like, I disagree. And they'd be like, we don't care. But in this... So it's kind of funny, in a sense, that obviously the, the resistance are defending democracy against the fascist Empire. Mm. And then they almost completely screw themselves over by voting to not fight the um so yeah fight the uh, you're right against, yeah just goes to show yes. michael when they go low if you go high then they'll undercut you and win that's true you've got to go low at the same time it's the only way to beat those people you're right we've got to uh can't look for the the high ground or else obi-wan will just cut off our legs yeah <laughs> what happened to uh actually no yeah yeah, really that was. Yeah, they were. Shit. Yeah, that was good, uh, wasn't it? Yeah, cut, cut, cut that bit out. Cut it out. Yeah, um, <laughs> we look like idiots. Yeah. Um. So, the uh the ending, Michael. Yeah, I wanted. So we're talking about Darth Vader. Yes. So this is the ending of the ending. Darth Vader comes in, and obviously he's not been in the movie apart from that one scene with Director Krennic. He comes in and he hooks up some rebels. You know, like the the proper badass that he is. Uh, I just wondered what you thought of that particular scene. I thought that it ruins the already uh, dwindling significance of the rest of the story because it kind of made like it was like the 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 climax of the film wasn't the fantastic sacrifice of Rogue One. It wasn't like people people weren't going mental about the fact that these characters engage in this you know heroic sacrifice. Instead, everyone was going mental about the fact that Darth Vader showed up with a lightsaber and, and killed some of the people who are on the side of the team that we were supposed to be supporting this whole time. Like, imagine if at the end of Empire Strikes Back, which is another classic dark Star Wars film, we just had Darth Vader show up and kill a bunch of completely disposable rebels. Yeah. Like, it doesn't work. It just doesn't yeah. work at all. So, well, that, here's the thing. You say that it, it doesn't work, but the thing is, I didn't like the movie anyway, so I needed this at the end, because it made me feel yeah. like, oh, yeah. So this so it was worth coming to see. Maybe not spending the money, but it was worth at least seeing. So I could see this this part of the movie where Darth Vader just you know just destroys all these rebels. And I know it's just like fan service and it's pointless and it's it's awful and all that. You know, some sophisticated movie reviewers might say you know it's just it's it's not what you want to it's not what you should have at the end of, at the end of the movie. And you, and you're right, it just shows how pointless this movie was if they had to put that in in at the end. Uh, but I don't, I don't care. I enjoyed it. It was one of the things I enjoyed about this movie. Um, yeah. So I liked it. There you go. Sweet. It was. It, it made sense in a bad film, I guess. Um, 
you know what it would what would work really well for it is if um okay here's how it would the only way you can have a scene like this work is if say for example in the solo film there is a a bunch of people who are mutual enemies of the empire and han solo mm -hmm. like for example you know they're they're a, a rival militia they're an independent militia and they're attacking han solo and they're not associated with rebellion and then you know han solo escapes and then darth vader shows up and kills them all that would work because then it's like okay well these are the militia that are bad and they just happen to be on the same you know it just happens to be that they're also enemies of the empire yeah and it works but yeah it, it doesn't work having the the people who are on the side of the side that we're supposed to be been rooting for this whole time being killed in this awesome way by this awesome bad guy yeah um, but the thing is we can get onto it later how a lot of movie can be considered fan service like people yeah. are fans of darth vader so to see yeah. him just go off like that it's it's entertaining and yeah maybe it makes me uncivilized the fact that i like it i don't know for lack of a better word uh, uh yeah i didn't dislike it there's a um i know that there's a video on i was gonna say it's on youtube it's probably been taken down for copyright it's probably on vimeo though you know vimeo always not to do and it was it was posted on reddit it was um a guy basically seamlessly edited the ending of rogue one into the beginning of yeah the new hope yeah, yeah, yeah. which is quite cool it's quite cool to watch very um, cool very cool yeah. now so, actually the ending the ending is misleading because Prince's layer ship blasts off into the space, you know. But she gets captured like five minutes later. It is weird. So that's the thing, like, if you've seen A New Hope, you know that she's gonna, like, obviously, like I said, get captured five minutes later. And therefore, the movie kind of ends on an uplifting tone, even though you know that that shouldn't be the case. What should happen? Oh, is... you know what it reminded me of? Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Well, that's great. But... <laughs> no, okay. So, no, there's there's an important. I I use this analogy a lot because I think it is a, a common recurring theme. At the end of Resident Evil Three, two things happen: a massive clone army is made, and a and Alice, who is the protagonist, played by Mila Jokovic. Is it Mila Jokovic or Mila Jokovic? One of the two. Anyway, she gets superpowers. Okay, and obviously this is classic hack filmmaking 101. You have the film end with the promises of these two cool things, uh, a mar an army of Mila Jokovic's and Mila Jokovic with superpowers. So you're like, okay, you know, that's going to be my reason to come to see this film next year. Uh -huh. Or, you know, I don't know. They don't do them every year. Um, but obviously, new director comes in. They go, well, you know, I just want to make my own film. I, I didn't, you know, we didn't have any plans for what we were going to do with that. We just uh, used it as, an ex as a reason for people to come in and see it. You know what, so Michael, literally the... just to cut in, this sounds a lot like The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi. Yeah, I was going to say, this is, there is a similarity there, yeah. which is why I'm saying it now. So, yeah, the, literally the first scene of uh, Resident Evil Afterlife, which is the fourth one, mm -hmm. is the clones being destroyed and Mila Jokovic losing her superpowers because they were just like, well, we don't care about it. Um and and in this case, it's kind of it's almost like reverse that because someone was like, okay, we need to have the film end on a triumphant note, so we're going to have the uh, the rebel ship escape. But then it's like if you watch the next film canonically, which is or chronologically, which is the um, a new hope, it's yeah. like oh they just escaped, and then they're the next scene in the next film is just them yes getting caught again. Uh, that's so, yeah. that's why I think you could have had an easy fix to this. You still could have had the triumphant music. But you could have Leia's ship, whatever it's called, blast off into hyperspace, quickly follow, followed like 10 seconds later by Darth Vader's ship, which also blasts off into um, space as well. Did I say hyperspace before? I think yeah, I you did say it. Just, just space, just normal, regular, good old space. Like, well, just five seconds later. Cause that, and you could have still ended it on an uplifting tone, because then it would be, look, these two are going off now, and New Hope and all the three original Star Wars movies, they're about to get underway. Here you go, that's the setup. Yes, um, and and it isn't isn't aren't the the original trilogy isn't it just made so much better by having watched this film? Doesn't this just set up so much? It makes that me be so... appreciate that scene in New Hope that I'm... bit that bit more. <laughs> it adds nothing. Yeah, there is nothing that yeah. Well, we okay. so it adds nothing, Michael. So obviously, you could make the accusation that this movie was just. Huh? fan service 
Yeah, you know what, actually, this kind of works because we can talk about fan service under World Book. Exactly. Because, there we of go. course, the, the uh, Star Wars is made up of different worlds and a big feature of world building is you develop all these interesting ideas and, and areas. And obviously this film, it starts off showing us all these new planets. Mm-hmm. Like there's kind of like a roll call where it shows all these new planets. It's kind of like showing us them. And there is some interesting world building in that, you know, um, you get the the religious ninjas who yeah. believe in the force. You get Scarif, which is kind of a, a world we haven't really seen a tropical planet before. Yeah. Um, but fundamentally, all of that world building is limited by the fact that we just have the same. We've got TIE fighters. What is, hey, do you remember what TIE stands for? Um, uh, twin Iron Engine. Yeah. Oh, did you... Did you actually remember that? Yeah, I did actually remember that. Okay, I've got a good yeah. memory, Michael. You know, See, the thing is, you're quite good at stealthily Googling things, so, so I just I? wonder something. Yeah, well, the thing is, like, for example, sometimes we're just, like, you know, it's the classic, we'll be talking about something, and you'll say that you don't know anything about it, and then within the space of a second, you're able to tell me everything about it, and I can, and it's because you've Googled the thing, like, when, for example, we're talking about, like, the characters, and you'll be like, oh, the character's called, you know, you're very good at just sneaking in a crafty yeah. Google. So, uh, yeah, I, no, I remembered it was Twin Iron Engine yeah. because, remember, I made that joke about the Thai people? Yes. And uh, it was a family guy joke, and it was very embarrassing for me. Yeah. And all that stuff, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right, by the way. Family guy. The, uh, the, world, world, uh, the world building in this, it's not too bad. Like I say, it's got new planets. I, li- I like the, the tropical planet. It was original, but they still have the same old stuff like they had in the original trilogy and in the, in the new ones as well. Yeah, this was a stupid film to make. I mean, there's so many reasons why this shouldn't have been the first film they made. But perhaps the biggest one is that, you know, obviously The Force Awakens, the big criticism was it was like a remake of A New Hope. And we say, well, you know, they did that because, you know, they wanted to remind people of the original trilogy. They wanted to remind people of it. But then, like, literally the next film they've done is a direct prequel to the extent that literally, you know, the, the last scene of this film pretty much leads directly into the first scene of, of A New Hope. And it's just like, you know, it's, it's, they're pushing their luck, Luke, well, really. Well, I don't think they're pushing their luck, Michael. I don't think that, because I said I didn't like this movie, and you said that, well, you said you liked it, but I think you've, you're coming around to the fact that this yeah. isn't that good a movie. However, Star Wars fans really like this movie. They really like Rogue One. And I know this because, you know, how I delve into YouTube comments sometimes. Yes. Well, I, you don't know that, but I think everybody does. Everybody looks at YouTube comments, and obviously I, so I've been seeing uh, reviews of Rogue One. I have over the past, well, not really the past year and a half, just like a few months after it came out. And in general, it seems to me like a lot of Star Wars fans really like Rogue One. They like it more than The Force Awakens, uh, because obviously this this movie goes into stuff like Guardians of the Wills and the Kyber Crystals, you know, stuff that they've read in their Star Wars books, you know, in their parents basement Nerd. yeah yes. that kind of stuff and it's also you know this this gritty realistic star wars movie and so it's like oh star wars is you know this universe that i love it's come to life you know all, all these planets that i you know i love and all of this stuff that i've read about you know in, in these books uh all, all of all of these interesting little things are in this movie and oh, i love it and obviously if that's your focus if you if you like rogue one because of you know, it's just putting stuff in the movie that you've read about. You're obviously not going to care about, like, the characters. You know, the characters are meaningless to you. They're just devices used to get onto the next bit of, uh, you know, exposition about the Star Wars universe. So uh, that is why, Michael, that this movie is... I don't think it's pushing his luck, because... Yeah, Disney it's knew... pushing its luck with people like me yes. and you. Yes, Disney knew that this was Star Wars fans were going to like this. Just pack a movie full of fans. So just put whack Darth Vader in at the end. People are gonna love it. Well, Star Star Wars fans are gonna love it because they they love this kind of shit. Like that is very clear. And so you, uh, in a solo a Star Wars story, you're gonna have the same kind of thing, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh, solo Star Wars story. Don't dare. Oh dear. Um, <laughs> you know what's the the best video on the internet is um. Top ten worst reasons you liked Rogue One. It's, <laughs> that is it's a great title. So yes, it's filled with so much anger. Um, yes, you should like. In the you comments should. Section. Okay, you can like this movie, but you should know that you should not like it. Like, yeah, yeah. It's it's okay to to like it, but you should be aware that you shouldn't like it. And if you do like it, 
it should be what is called a guilty pleasure. It's like, you know what, yes. I know it's not a good movie, I know it doesn't work, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I still like it, because it, they said Guardians of the Wills, they said that. Incredible. Yeah, now I'm trying to think of a film I like that's like that, but I can't think of one. There's probably a film I like that is like that. It's a, film, it's, a, it's a good example, a film where you, you know you shouldn't like it, or, or sorry, a, a film that's not good, but it, it does something, it, it's about something that's close to your heart, and that means that you like it. Yeah, I this think... This film, if you love Star Wars, mm. I, unconditionally... I won't, I'm not going to use a film example, but for me it would be Lewis Hamilton. Like, yeah. I, I, I really like him because he was my childhood hero growing up. So the fact that I just love Formula One and he was like incredible. But I, I know I really shouldn't like him because he's not that interesting a person. And he's a, you know, a tax exile you know yes and, tax exile yeah oh, he, he's, no he's i like the idea that we would exile people who yeah. don't pay their taxes <laughs> it's not a tax to the it's not, he, uh, he's not a tax exile sorry that, that's not he, he basically evader. moved to yeah well not evader he moved to switzerland Kingdom. and then monaco to avoid paying tax okay like i should not yeah. i shouldn't like him i should but I, I do i still do i can't help it yes well you're part of the problem luke I'm part of the problem uh anyway yeah. yeah so it's okay like i like I said it's okay to like this movie but you got to know that. You shouldn't, really. Yes. Um, I feel like we can kind of wrap up with that. I mean, that almost felt like a bit of a wrap-up, but... Uh, yeah. Are you ready to wrap up? Uh, yeah, I have got nothing you, else you to wanna, say. Do you want to wrap up first? I'll go first, Michael. I will go first. So, as mentioned uh, before this movie, well, just like a minute before, this movie is not that good. Uh, I did not like it. Um, and the main problem is, of course, the awful characters. And this movie needed to have good characters if you, you know... If you weren't a Star Wars fan, because obviously, uh, you know you know the ending. The plot's simple, so to keep it interesting, the characters need to be interesting. They weren't. Genosa is awful. She is boring. Uh, the actor who played her, Felicity Jones, is also awful. Uh, Cassian Andor is also awful. And the only redeeming features about this movie are uh, the uh, the beasters uh, and uh, the way it looks uh, and the action scenes. But, as we all know, action scenes don't make a movie. Uh, or they don't make a movie good. Uh, and so, yeah, this, this movie falls short of being good. Uh, it is just barely competent. Uh, and for that reason, since I'm not a Star Wars fan, and I uh, do care about things such as characters and, uh, and an interesting plot, I am going to have to give this movie a 5 out of 10. <sighs> yes, um, I'm quite looking forward to, I think after The Last Jedi, we're going to talk about the Star Wars universe in general, which I think is kind of useful because this is yeah. this is a film that makes you begin to ask questions of the Star Wars universe, like, you know, yeah. what can they really do with it? Um, does, does Star Wars even work as a film franchise? Because it seems like every single Star Wars film since, possibly, well, since Empire has been problematic and since... Return of the Jedi yeah. has been pretty rubbish. Um, I, I just so... want to say, by the way, Michael, I am a Star Wars fan in the sense I do like the movies or, or like the originals, but I'm not a Star Wars fan fan. I'm not the kind of guy who, like, like you said, watches Rebels, that TV show. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, uh, I'm not that big a fan. Yeah, the risk of, of saying a classic line, I'm a good movies fan, uh, which means, you know, I, I, like, I like the idea of Star Wars as an expansive universe, because, I mean, in essence, Star Wars is set in an entire galaxy and it's it covers um like 2000 like tw it covers 25,000 years of history it does uh, that is when the the first star wars comics dawn of the jedi are set in 25,000 bby i don't remember what bby stands for um before uh, the battle b before oh. black yoda <laughs> knowing disney <laughs> it's coming <laughs> anyway um but yeah this this film like i said I, I was surprised by i was expecting to to completely hate it i think to me this felt like one of those films that is is not good but uh is 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 not it didn't make me angry i wasn't i was like okay it's just a bad film it kind of reminded me of something like tomb raider like it was just like okay Yes. It's it's a film that's happening. Um, I think I, I gave Tomb Raider four out of ten. So I thought this movie yeah. was 
Was yeah, it? I think this film's it's better than Tomb Raider, yeah. but it kind of reminded me of like like I was just thinking to myself, well, it's not it's not well made, but um, yeah. like, I mean there were so the question obviously is do I like this film more or less than The Force Awakens? Because The Force Awakens right now is between Tomb Raider and Dunkirk, and like we just said, Tomb Raider is better. Oh, sorry, this film is better than Tomb Raider, and I think that this film is worse than Dunkirk. Um, so basically. It's going to be right next to The Force Awakens. It's just a matter of whether or not I'm going to put it above or below. It, the advantage it has over The Force Awakens is, like I say, I felt like this was a more coherent story. And I, I suppose also The Force Awakens, my big criticism of it was that I felt that it kind of invalidated the original trilogy. This film uh, didn't. It, it didn't add anything to the original trilogy, but it also didn't take anything away. It just said, you know, this film, it, it didn't. It just felt like... Uh, a standard Hollywood action film that happened to be set in the Star Wars universe and then had a load of obnoxious fan service in it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I struggle to, to definitively place this above or below the force awakens. I think that I'm going to, to place it above. Oh, sorry. No, I'm going to place it below the force awakens based on the the strengths of actually no i'm going to place it above the force awakens oh wow uh, i disagree with you on that i was going to change my you know what i was about to say i was about to say that because i liked the character of ray but then i realized i don't like the character of ray i think she's crap yeah. um so why so why is it worse though well you know what i mean it, it is a much of a muchness in a way uh, and to be honest i could almost rate them equally but to me it comes down to the fact that uh, the the Force Awakens felt kind of like completely pointless. What I like, okay, so I'll, I'll say this for example. I liked the fact that this film uh, was a war film. I like the fact that this film had like an element of, you know, we're going to. It was basically all about a battle, a shooting battle with people shooting each other, rather than. Um, and I kind of, I think ironically, even though this film. Uh, had so much fan service in it and was you know so kind of dependent on the original trilogy uh -huh. this film also did a lot that was new like um it, it had the idea of um having a a small story within the wider star wars story i think is interesting and the idea of you've got this um this it's not you know two great heroes confront each other and that's kind of why for example i can even forgive the fact that felicity jones is a completely pointless character because in star wars the force awakens ray i think ray is better than Jyn Erso yes, by yes. a reasonable margin Definitely, but i yes. think that jay she's still, or sorry ray she still has a lot of problems and the problem is that ray is is the you know she's written like the important character the chosen one who needs to confront i know she's not really written as chosen one but she needs to confront kylo ren and you're supposed to get really invested in her confronting kylo ren yeah and then Obviously, you don't really care that much. Whereas with this, yes, Jyn Erso is pointless and uninteresting and crap, but she's also just written as, um, apart from her embarrassing inspirational speech, she's just written as a pawn, somebody on the, the front line who made a sacrifice and died. So I kind of like, I, I feel like this film asked less of me than The Force Awakens, which means that I let it off. This film, it didn't, it didn't demand that the characters be these serious people who are going to have this massive confrontation. You, it just you said, can't okay. let them get away with it, though, Michael. You can't. You've got to stand your ground here. Uh, well, you know, I think this is this is probably subject to change in a, in a review, because it's kind of like, it's a, it's a, as I said when I was reviewing The Force Awakens, I don't particularly want to watch it again, so I don't have it fresh in my mind, but obviously I'll probably watch it again when we review uh, where we've placed our stuff. So, for now, I am going to keep it above, because I want to maintain my integrity on the show by not looking like I just... Because I caved into you, I caved into you on Daddy's Home, too. I was going to put Daddy's Home too above Tomb Raider, Luke, and I I moved it below because you convinced me. But this time, this this film, Luke, is better than Daddy's Home too. It's hard to imagine a film being better than Daddy's Home too, but this film is better, and it's better than The Force Awakens, possibly. Is it? Wait, so that means obviously, what well, you think that Daddy's Home is better than Lara Croft Tomb Raider? No, I don't really. I, I, it was a classic example of I didn't really know which way to put it, partially okay. because I don't really remember. But yeah, I remember Daddy's Home too. I did, I almost put it, 
above Tomb Raider. That was just because I no, didn't really not care. Not Daddy's Home 2, just Daddy's Home. Oh, yeah, I did put Daddy's Home above Tomb Raider. Okay, so if you had thought that The Force Awakens... Oh, sorry, that Rogue One was worse than The Force Awakens, you would have put it between Daddy's Home and Rogue One. I'm sorry, and The Force Awakens. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. All right. Anyway, Same so... Yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I think we're... Rogue One, above Force Awakens, below Dunkirk. Okay. It's funny, actually, because Dunkirk is also a, a war movie. Hmm, maybe you just hate the troops, Michael. Yeah, maybe I do. <laughs> Even though I've rated both of them lower. Uh, but yeah, okay, so that has been our review of Rogue One. I think it was a very good review. We dived into a lot of things, which, to be honest, I hadn't seen a lot of discussions on it. Like, I, I would really like to I've see... seen the meme discussions? Sorry? Most of the, discuss- most of the discussions I've seen have just been memes. Yeah. <laughs> I, would li- I would like to see a Mr. Plinkett review of Rogue One. Uh, I don't think yeah, he did. I don't um, think he did one. I think he did like a ten minute one of Rogue One. Uh, yeah, I think Mr. Plinkett's lost his passion. Yeah, well we'll see. Last Jedi came out on Blu-ray recently, uh, so obviously, hopefully we'll see another review of the Last Jedi from Mr. Plinkett. Uh, and speaking of the Last Jedi, that is the movie we are doing next week. And the, yeah. The whole the whole reason why we came up with this idea is because, well, I suggested it to you because I saw. The Last Jedi, and then I was like, "How?" I didn't. I didn't know that. Sorry, I did not know that the reason you came up with the reason you came up with the idea of doing um the pod. Are you saying that your reason for doing the podcast was because you saw the Last Jedi? No, well, it's because I saw the Last Jedi, and then I saw like obviously, a load of critics have given it good reviews, and I was like, "Wait, no. What about all? What about this? There's so many problems with it. Like how? Um, and so I basically was like, you know what, I think I should talk about this, but then I was like, well, I can't really talk about it by myself. Hey, why don't, you know what, I could, we, could, we should, do a, should do a podcast, me, me and you, Michael. Wow, that's a real origin story there. Yeah, like... there you go. That's how it all began. Wow. Uh, if The Last Jedi wasn't so shit, I, <laughs> we wouldn't be here today. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to talking about The Last Jedi, Luke. Yeah. It's, uh, okay. it's yeah. a classic. Well, we can get in, into that next week, but... We have been selecting and reflecting on Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Uh, this week, who have you been, Michael? I've been Michael. And I have been Luke. Uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, comes out around this time. This will be uploaded. Um, let's see if it still yeah. has the problems, obviously, of, of Rogue One. Uh, hopefully it doesn't, but something tells me that might be the case. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye. 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 Right, okay.